In this video, we're going to take our first look at the work kinetic energy theorem. We're going to stay in one dimension. The work kinetic energy theorem says that for a particle, the total work on the particle equals the change in kinetic energy. If I were to write that out, I would have some work, I emphasize total in the subscript, is equal to the change in kinetic energy, so that's the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. I sometimes write that as delta K. Always remember when you see that, it's a single value, delta K, and it represents a difference, and almost every time it's the final version of that quantity minus the initial. Work can be positive or negative, so if work is greater than zero, then kinetic energy is greater than zero, which means that there's energy entering the system. The final kinetic energy is larger than the initial. Remember that when the work is less than zero, that means it's removing energy from the system. The change in kinetic energy is less than zero, and that means energy is coming out. Remember that kinetic energy itself is always positive. Kinetic energy cannot go below zero. Work can. So remember that kinetic energy is just one-half times the mass of the object times the speed of the object squared. So if I were to substitute that in, that tells me that the total work is one-half m, the final velocity squared, minus one-half the mass times the initial velocity squared. So let's just do a couple examples. I'm going to throw a ball up in the air with a velocity v, and I want to know what height h it reaches. Now I can do this with kinematics, but we're going to do it as a simple example using work. First, I want to establish a coordinate system and a free body diagram looking at my forces. To calculate work, I have to find the force that does the work, so I do a force analysis first. Here's my free body diagram. The only force on the object is gravity. It's down. I'm going to establish a positive axis up. So my force has some magnitude, which is the mass of the object times g, and since it's pointing down, I'm going to give it a negative sign indicating the direction for my one-dimensional vector notation, where the value is the magnitude of the force and the sign indicates direction. I also want to find a displacement. There's a number of ways to calculate work from forces, but my force is constant throughout. Since it's constant, there's a simple formula I can use once I find the displacement. The displacement vector is then the final position minus the initial, or in a straight line, it's simply the vector that goes from the initial position to the final position. And so that vector has a magnitude, length of that vector, which is h, pointing in the positive direction. I want to make sure, double check, that my coordinate systems for my displacement and my force are both pointing in the same direction. So now I can calculate my work using my simple formula for the condition where I have a constant force and everything is in one dimension. It's just the multiplication of the force times the displacement where I use the one dimensional vector notation. So I have a negative mass acceleration due to gravity times height. That's equal to the change in kinetic energy or k final minus k initial. Well, my k final is zero. I wanna know how high it goes. And at the very top of the trajectory, its final velocity is going to be zero, which means its kinetic energy is going to be zero. That tells me that negative mass times g times height is equal to negative, there's this negative here, one half mv squared, where v is the initial velocity I threw the ball. The masses and the negatives cancel, and I can solve for my height, which is v squared over two g. Let's do a slightly more complicated example where I have multiple forces. This is my cargo chute where I eject cargo out of my spaceship. The chute is six meters long, and there's a force that ejects the cargo given by this expression here. It varies in position. And there's also a frictional force in the opposite direction as the cargo is ejected, and the cargo is 30 kilograms. So I already have a picture here of what's going on. The cargo starts and there's a force, and as it's ejected in this direction, the force gets larger. I've already established a coordinate system here too. I've established the origin where the cargo starts, and then I have six meters later where it's ejected and with positive up. Notice that this form of the force already assumes this setup with the coordinate system, so I've done that ahead of time and these should be vectors. What I want to know is what is the final speed of the cargo leaving the system? Well, I know that speed is related to kinetic energy, and I'm gonna apply work to this problem. 
So if I calculate the net work on the object, that's going to give me the change in kinetic energy. The object starts at rest, and so the final kinetic energy can give me the final speed. That's going to be my approach. The first thing I'm going to calculate, I'm just sort of in brainstorming now. I just want to calculate things to see where it turns out. I'm going to calculate the displacement first. Now the displacement is the final position minus the initial position. It's a vector going from the initial location to the final. Well, it has some magnitude of six meters. It's in a straight line, and it's pointing in the positive x direction. Given my one-dimensional vector notation, the value is the magnitude, and the sign indicates the direction. Now I'm going to look at my forces. I'll do a quick free body diagram here. Make sure that my coordinate system for my forces is in the same direction as the coordinate system where I analyze the displacement. I have two forces, this pushing force and then some frictional force, which is down. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the work due to the pushing force. The pushing force varies in space, but it does not vary in time. So that tells me I can use my formula where the work is the integral of the spatially varying force over the one-dimensional distance. So that's the integral from 0 to 6 meters of that spatially dependent force over x. That's a simple polynomial. The indefinite integral is 30x plus 5x squared over 2, evaluated between 6 and 0. So I just substitute in the 6, and I get 180 plus 90, or the work due to the pushing force is 270 joules. Well, now I need the work due to the frictional force. Well, this is easy because the frictional force is constant, and so I can just multiply the force times the displacement where I use the one-dimensional notation for vectors. 20 is the magnitude, it's pointing in the negative x direction. The displacement is 6 in the positive, so the work due to friction is negative 120 joules. I can now find the total work, which is the sum of the individual works, and that's 150 joules. So the work is the change in kinetic energy, kinetic energy final minus initial. The kinetic energy initial is zero since it started at rest, its velocity was zero. So that means the total work is just one half mv squared where v is the final velocity. I can solve for v then, twice times the work divided by the mass. Now I can go ahead and plug in numbers, two times 150 over 30. So 300 divided by 30 in the square root, cancel a zero, and the velocity looks to be the square root of 10 meters per second. Is there another way I can check this answer? Sure there is. I can go back and find the net force and see if I come up with the same work. So I've rewritten my forces here, the pushing force and the frictional force. If I add them together for their vector sum, I'm still in my one-dimensional notation, I just get 10 plus 5x. This is now my total force, so integrating it will give me my total work. The indefinite integral, 10x plus 5x squared over 2, evaluated between 6 and 0, and that just gives me 60 plus then 90 again. 36 divided by 2 is 18 times 50, and then 150 joules, which is consistent with what I had before. Now, in fact, this was probably a bit easier to find the answer. But that's okay, because I was going to do both anyway. So in calculating work for the kinetic energy theorem, you want to make sure you only have a particle, because that's all that it holds for. You want to calculate the total work, and that total work then is the change in kinetic energy, final minus the initial. And you can find the net work by finding the individual work of the forces and then add them, or to find the total force and calculate the work for that. And best is to do it both ways, to make sure they're consistent.